There's an outbreak of measles erupting in a Florida school. A Florida woman slapped her mom in the face with hot grits. A Florida couple was arrested following a bestiality investigation. And Florida lawmakers pass a ban on social media for kids under 16. These are the weird stories for Friday on Weird AF News. And they are all from the state of Florida. Because on Friday, we only do weird news from Florida on Weird AF News. The only daily weird news podcast in the universe. Let's go. I don't care if Monday's blue, Tuesday's gray, and Wednesday too. Thursday, I don't care about you. It's Friday. I'm in Florida. Measles erupted in a Florida school where over 10% of the children are unvaccinated. Way to go, Florida. Bring back these old diseases that we have under control. Why stop at measles? How about some polio? How about a little scurvy? The Black Plague? Would you guys be surprised with the headline, Black Plague breaks out in South Florida? I wouldn't. So sad, so sad. This could have totally been avoided if Florida didn't ban all those important books with that information inside. Like the dictionary. (laughs) When are we going to build that wall around Florida? Can anyone answer this question? Is there a GoFundMe to build the Florida wall? I will donate to it. On top of all of this, we have an idiot as the Surgeon General in Florida. His name is Joseph Ladapo. He sent a letter to parents granting them permission to send unvaccinated children to school during this measles outbreak. (laughs) Nothing to see here. It's fine. Send your kids to the... (laughs) Don't worry. There's no drag queens reading books to them at the school. There's measles, but that's fine. Just send them to the school. (laughs) Wow. Florida. Dumber than a pile of gopher turds, huh? Now, as you can imagine, the Florida Surgeon General's decision contradicts advice from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, We have a quote here from a Florida's former Surgeon General, who is now a professor, who says, This is not a parental rights issue. It's about protecting fellow classmates, teachers, and members of the community against measles, which is a very serious and very transmissible illness, as everybody knows. Uh, The CDC advises that unvaccinated students stay home from school. So any of you listening, stay home from school. Uh, And if you are found to be exposed, stay home for three weeks uh, because this highly contagious measles virus spreads on tiny droplets through the air and on surfaces. Students are considered exposed simply by sitting in the same classroom as someone infected or the same cafeteria as someone infected, so very easily exposed. And a person with measles can can pass along an infection before they even develop a fever, a cough, rash, or other signs of the illness. About one in five people with measles end up hospitalized. One in 10 develop severe ear infections that can lead to permanent hearing loss, and about one in 1,000 die from respiratory and neurological complications as as a result of contracting measles. We now have a quote here from Teresa Gambon, who's the president of the American Academy of Pediatrics. She says, measles is so contagious, it is very worrisome. I don't know why the Florida Health Department wouldn't follow the CDC recommendations. Uh, Teresa, don't you realize it's, it's, it's because it's a Republican-run state? That's why, that's why they're always trying to make a point. They're like, that'll show those vax-loving liberals. Ha-ha, no government can control me. If I don't want to take the vaccine, I'm not taking the vaccine. If I want to send my kid to school, I'm sending my kid to school. (laughs) Imagine sacrificing your child to make a political point. In in case you happen to be a Florida man and you're afraid of science and education, uh, the data doesn't back up the fear of this particular vaccine, considering the dangers of measles the vaccine for measles incredibly safe they've proven this a person is about four times as likely to die from being struck by lightning during their lifetime as to have a potentially life-threatening allergic reaction to the measles mumps and rubella vaccine nonetheless sadly last year a record number of parents filed for exemptions from school vaccine requirements on religious or philosophical grounds across the united states and in florida in particular 
Only about a quarter of Florida's counties had reached the 95% threshold at which communities are considered well protected against measles outbreaks, according to the most recent data posted by the Florida Department of Health in 2022. <laughs> Wait till you get those 2023 stats, brother. Someone needs to tell Florida, huh? Guys, guys, you can't pray away measles. So sorry. A Florida woman slapped her mother in the face with hot grits. You guys ever been mad before? I'm sure you've been mad before. You ever been uh, slap your mom in the face with hot grits mad? That's upper level Florida anger right here. A lot of people attacking their mothers and grandmothers and doing bad things in Florida. A couple months ago, a daughter stole her mother's car in Florida and then ran her over with it. Last week, I had a, a story about a, a guy who carjacked his grandmother in Florida. It's just out of control. The disrespect on mothers in Florida. It's really something. A Florida woman was arrested after an argument with her mother over pizza that escalated into a full-blown assault involving hot grits. According to the arrest affidavit, we have here Jackie Mobley, age 28, arrested and charged with battery after she allegedly slapped her mother in the face with hot grits. Hot grits are no joke, man. You can ask Al Green about that. He was <laughs> Al Green was taken down by some hot grits. Hot grits are like napalm, man. You get them on your face. I mean, skin grafts, kid. Skin grafts are needed. Uh, Jackie told the deputies she was sleeping on the street in Ocala on Sunday night, but then she asked her mother to pick her up so she could have a warm place to sleep. Uh, she paid her mother back with a, uh, a warm slap in the face. So sad. This mother just trying to help her daughter out. She shouldn't be sleeping on the street. She's like, okay, I'll bring you home. I'll make you some nice grits. The next morning, Jackie told her mother she was going to make a pizza. Okay, pizza for breakfast. Not out of the ordinary. Not ideal, but okay. Her mother countered by saying, no, no, I'm making some grits. She offered to share grits or to make a different breakfast item. By the way, grits are great for breakfast. It doesn't indicate whether these are savory or sweet. I prefer the savory. A little shrimp in the, in the grits. A little pork. Oh, I'm all in, man. Now, apparently, a Jackie insisted on making the pizza. The mother said, no, you don't need to make a pizza. I'm making grits. The argument allegedly escalated. Jackie, the daughter, grabbed some of the grits her mother had made on the stove and smacked her in the face with the hot grits, according to the affidavit. Of course, uh, Jackie tried to blame her mother for the fight, claiming she had grabbed the grits and hit herself in the face with the grits to make it seem as though she was battered by her daughter. However, deputies reported that they saw grits on the side of Jackie's mother's face, along with a mark created by a hand in the grits, which matched the mother's statement. It doesn't indicate if they took the fingerprints out of the grit mark. I'm sure there was... <laughs> this is like a face grit CSI investigations here to find out who's, who slapped the mother with the grits. How did the grits get on the mother's face? This all could have been avoided and with a compromise. Maybe they could have ordered a grits pizza from the local pizza and grits. I don't know if you guys have had that. Not to be confused with the pizza and gravy place. <laughs> oh, Florida, man. Florida breakfast. <laughs> Nice to know you can get your Florida breakfast with a side of a slap in the face or indecent exposure. But the mom in the corner said, girl, I'm going to warn you, but she got slapped with the hot, hot grits, hot, hot grits, hot, hot grits. A Florida couple has been arrested and accused of bestiality on household pets. You know, I tell you right now, that meteor can't hit the state of Florida fast enough. Am I right, guys? <laughs> uh, this is ridiculous. A Florida couple has been arrested after a woman named Samantha White, age 26, was accused of having inappropriate sexual relations with the family dog multiple times, while at the same time her husband, John White, age 29, filmed it. Yeah, so she has sex with a dog. He films it. It's the family pet. I think we can say that uh, Thanksgiving is going to be very weird in the White family this year. We have police in Lee County who claim that the wife will face charges related to the acts with the animals, while the husband will be charged for recording inappropriate images or videos of the activities. Four dogs in total were taken from their home by Animal Services to check for any further injuries. Thankfully, the dogs are being cared for at the animal shelter in a safe environment. 
I'm looking at a picture of the two perpetrators, and uh, they look as though they would uh, have sexual relations with animals. They really do. They also look related. I don't know if that's um, just a coincidence. <laughs> How do these people find each other? The dog park? Uh, sadly, this is not an isolated case because uh, we are living at the lowest time in humanity's history, unfortunately. Uh, a similar case a few months ago um, was found where a woman in Mississippi was arrested for filming herself in an act with a dog and then sharing it on social media as well. They just want to share this stuff on social media. That's the other disturbing part of it. They think other people want to see this. How does that even come about? <laughs> I just don't understand it. Hey, honey, honey, I think the dog wants a piece of me. Do you mind? Mind? How about I film it, baby, on my new iPhone 15 titanium? We can make some money on Bonely fans. Wow. Is there anything more dangerous in this world, as far as environments go, than a Florida household? I mean, <laughs> I've always gone on and on on the Florida Friday segments about how we have to get a GoFundMe together to save the children. And get them out of Florida. Save the Florida children. We need to start a GoFundMe to save the Florida pets as well. I never thought I'd have to say that. But yeah, we need to save the dogs and the cats too. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash ev9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Yay! Florida lawmakers pass a ban on social media for children under 16. And hey, if it keeps them away from videos of couples having a bestiality session, then I'm all for it. <laughs> Keep it away from the kids. Unfortunately, the children are witnessing it with their own eyes in these Florida households. The lawmakers are out of their minds, though, too. This story is out of Tallahassee. A bill to create one of the nation's most restrictive bans on minors' use of social media is heading to Republican Florida Governor Ronnie D., who has expressed some concerns about the legislation in order to keep children under the age of 16 off popular platforms, regardless of parental approval of said platforms. Oh, Florida, it makes so much sense. Old enough to have some babies, but not old enough for TikTok, we've decided. You got three kids? Nice, nice. Don't, don't you post photos of those kids on Facebook, though, all right? The House passed the bill on a 108 to 7 vote. Wow, that's a lot. 108 to 7 vote. They really feel strongly about keeping the dangerous social media away from the kids. Same as the dictionaries. They're afraid of such things. They're afraid of information is what's going on here. This bill targets any social media site that tracks user activity, allows children to upload material and interact with others. Can't have them interacting with others. They'll find out that it's not okay to hump the dog on the couch. Um, supporters point to rising suicide rates among children, cyberbullying, and predators using social media to prey on kids. Yes, all of these are, are concerns, of course. But I think you have bigger concerns in Florida than social media. You have parents that are making out with the, with the pet hamster <laughs> pretty frequently, it seems. Here's a quote from the bill's Senate sponsor, Republican Erin Grawl. She says, we're talking about businesses that are using addictive features to engage in mass manipulation of our children to cause them harm. Yeah, but is it as much harm, Erin Grawl, as the... Florida Walmart parking lots are causing these children. I mean, <laughs> you got you got real problems over there, Aaron. You got real problems. Opponents of this say this blatantly violates the First Amendment and that it should be left to the parents, not the government, to monitor children's social media use. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The parents should make this decision, and there are safeguards installed in these apps that uh, easily allow parents to do so. There's monitoring apps that the parents can have on their smart devices that allow them to sort of keep tabs on what the children are doing. Of course, some kids are going to find a workaround to that, but there's always going to be a workaround to every rule that you create. you got to just do the best you can. You have here a, a reasonable parent named Angela. She lives in central Florida. 
She may be the only reasonable parent in Florida. She says she understands the rationale behind this social media bill and that she and her husband didn't let their daughter onto any major social media platforms until the daughter turned 15. But Angela believes it should be up to every parent to make that decision based on the maturity of their children. She says, quote, whatever happened to parental rights? You are already selecting books my child can read at school and can't read at school. That is fine to a certain extent, but now you're also moving into their private life as well. It's becoming intrusive, I say. Angela is absolutely right. This is a parental rights issue, in my opinion. Some issues are parental rights issues. Other issues are what's best for the community rights, community rights issues, such as getting measles vaccinations. And that shouldn't be up to the parents. So you have to find a balance between parental rights and community safety. And you also have to sort of ask the question, uh, does this make sense? <laughs> like any fool can see trying to ban social media to an entire from an entire state of children under the age of 16 isn't going to work just from a technical standpoint. Like, how are you going to carry this out? <laughs> are you really going to monitor it like that? How much of the community's resources would be spent monitoring all of the social media activity for an entire state? I mean, at these sorts of things you find in China with their firewalls and their ban on TikTok and all these other things. And everybody knows when you ban something, you just create a black market for it. So instead of drug dealers, you're going to have app dealers on every corner in Florida, I'd imagine. Hey, kid, I got your Snapchat right here, kid. Hey, yeah, you want a little TikTok, huh? Two for one. I'll give you a little deal. Hey, the first post is free, kid. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Yay! Hello, my friends. Thanks for spending some time with me and the Weird AF News podcast. I hope you enjoyed this Florida Friday episode, and I want to give thanks to anyone who sent me weird Florida stories the past couple days. Very, very helpful. By the way, if you were triggered by any of these stories, or maybe you have an opinion about it, such as whether or not children under the age of 16 should be allowed to have social media and that the government should make that, that decision for you, please call the show and express your opinion. We welcome all opinions on Weird AF News. Uh, the number six four six four five zero twenty twelve. 2012 I'm not a parent, uh, so I would like to hear from some parents on these sorts of things. Also, the measles situation. I'm sure some of you have an opinion on that as well. And if you have a, a great, a wonderful grits recipe, please, please feel free to share that with me. I like grits. Um, so my email is funnyjones at gmail.com. You can slide into my DMs on Instagram at funnyjones. Got a big show tonight in Hollywood, by the way. If you're in Southern California, please reach out to me on Instagram and I'll put you on the guest list. The show's at eight o'clock on uh, Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. It's a very special event and you can see all the information on my Instagram at funnyjones. Please follow me and uh, send me a message. I, I'm In most instances, I reply. I reply. I love to hear from my, uh, my listeners. If you want to support the show because uh, you hit the lottery this week, I, I, I support that. I support you supporting the show with your lottery money. Go to weirdafnews.com. That's the official website of Weird AF News, paid for by uh, the lovely donations that I get from my listeners that I'm so grateful for. You can join the Patreon there, which is sort of like buying Jonesy a beer every month. Pretty cool. And you also get access to extra weird content that I put inside the Patreon. And you get to become sort of like a, a member of this weird AF fan club that's in the Patreon. Mm -hmm. A lot of amazing supporters and fans of the show have been uh, part of the Patreon for years, and I'm very, very grateful for all my supporters. You can also buy me a, just a one-off cup of coffee on the website, weirdafnews.com. Just click on the cup of coffee. Or um, you don't have to do anything. You can support the show by just telling a friend that you enjoy Weird AF News. If you think a friend might get something out of this because they're feeling sort of down, down and out, 
maybe they listen to a lot of mainstream news, which can be quite debilitating on your mind and your soul. So maybe Weird AF News might be something they should try. So feel free to recommend that. I find it very helpful and effective to spread the word um, interpersonally with friends and relatives. And so you might run into people over the weekend. Maybe you're having a barbecue. Maybe you're having a grits off. A grits off? You guys ever been to a grits off where people just make a bunch of grits? <laughs> I've never even heard of a grits off. I just think it would be fun. I do love a, a chili a, a chili festival. Is it called a festival? A chili off? A, ch- a chili festival. Oh, I love, so, I love chili so much. That's a good time. Anyways, now I'm rambling because I'm highly caffeinated, but that's the way it should be in life, shouldn't it? Anyways, I'll let you guys go. I hope you have a great weekend. I love you very much, and good luck with your life, man.